Hey guys, just wanted to give you my review of The Purge Election Year. Um, it stars Frank Grillo from Captain America the Winter Soldier and Civil War. He played Crossbones and also Elizabeth Mitchell who from Lost, who plays Senator Charlie Rowan. Um, Grillo is reprising the role as Leo Barnes, who is now the head of security for the set for Senator Rowan, who is now running for president in order to eliminate the purge because her family was killed during the annual purge, like a few years back. But because of a government conspiracy, and you know, the NFA is being led by a man who who wants the purge to remain, but the but his own party wants to wash his hands of him, kind of like you know Donald Trump and other candidates and and then of course you have um the fem you know the fem female president who's a fe uh, female presidential candidate who's running who's running against that person and also it's a very heavy out and of course even the slogan keep america great um kind of very heavy-handed jabs the whole political election um but anyway in order to get rid of Senator Rowan, the new founding fathers lift the rule saying that government officials or upperclassmen are immune to assassination, to being victims of the purge or killings when the crime's legalized for 12 hours. And and basically because of a mole in her own, like, secure, in her own, um, security staff, she's basically, they basically have to, Barnes and Rowan have to hit the streets, and they're basically on the run from both purgers and basically also the neo-Nazi mercenaries that the NF, the NF, FA hired to kill her, and so they have to join forces with um, basically the shop owners who who rescue them from purgers who are actually the ones featured on the poster. Um, they're ones played Joe Dixon, who's played by. McKelty Williamson, he was seen on 24 season 8. Um, Marcos, and then there is also, who's played by Joseph Julian Sor Sorora, and then Betty Gabriel plays Lainey Rucker, who um, basically is like MT, is the like EMT who goes out on this, who goes out during these annual purges and he goes to help victims, even when they're even when they says no law enforcement is supposed to help them, and she's also part of an underground resistance trying to, um, and who are like against the purge, and other members of that resistance wants to are part of an assassination attempt, and basically, it's Barnes is basically re responsible for simultaneously protecting Rowan and also fulfilling her wishes to prevent the assassination because she wants to win on her own merits and let the voters decide. And as opposed, and not make him, and is afraid of making a martyr out of the minister, her opponent, while, um, while at the same time, but basically the resistance feels like they need to need to kill the guy and make sure she gets in office and runs unopposed. So it's and so this is basically this whole like kind of plat back, back and forth. It's, it has some like really cool ideas in this movie, so it's not like just a, just a dumb like slasher flick. Which I really appreciate. There are also some times where it's like it has some like really cool ideas, but at the same time it has this moment of campiness. So it falls into this weird place where it's like it should be like an action horror film that takes it that shouldn't be taking itself seriously, and yet it does just because of the fact that there's this one scene where this girl who basically tries to shop at a candy bar from Joe's store and threatens to yell rape, and then of course she's one of the purgers who keeps. Um, pestering him and basically just you know being acting campy he's like hey you old fuck I'm coming back from my damn candy bar and she keeps like going on about it and it just seems like kind of silly and there's even one moment where Lanny references how she was tending to a man who got shot by his wife because she couldn't stand to look at look at his face and she said that the it didn't make her feel better so it's just like silly things like that where it just seems like it's a little bit kind of jokey and campy and it, it you feel like the film's taking itself too seriously and yet it does come off as a great there's a lot of great action um you know great 
and it's pretty thrilling and like I said it's kind of like a little bit smarter than you know smarter than your average horror than the average horror film which I guess is what makes this franchise kind of unique for some people and Again, I, I want, I'm gonna go back and rewatch the other two at some point, but this is definitely something I really I really like this movie. I definitely recommend you go out and see it. I would give it I give it like a seven out of, I just say give it a seven out of ten. Um definitely a good fourth of July weekend movie. It'll be far better your money would be far better spent doing this than going to see um Independence Day. I can give you my thoughts about it. In my last video, I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a link in this video to, if you want to go check that out. But um, if you haven't seen the Purge, it, do you guys still want to see the Purge? I mean, if if you have seen all three movies, where does this rank for you? Um, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.